In which animal species does inbreeding have deleterious effects? In which, if any, doesn't it? Is it dependent on their niches? Much love to you too and the family. Yes, it's dependent on niches. Should be. It, sh it should be. I, again, I'm not familiar with the empirical work. Uh, I feel like there's some, you know, some famous big examples in which we clearly see inbreeding um, causing problems, but it's, you know, it's frankly most obvious in humans and, and artificial selection of like of dom our domesticates, our farm animals and such. Well, I think it's actually inbreeding is overrated as a problem because we see it. When we see it, we see the problem. What we don't see is the huge number of instances in which inbreeding exists at a node of a phylogeny. When something moves across a barrier and founds a new population that becomes a different species over time, it is very often going to be the result of a very tiny population producing a sizable population. So there was inbreeding. And what people don't get is that if you take two populations that are separated and then you isolate, or if you take members from a population and you isolate them and you cause inbreeding, you will get an immediate decrease in fitness. Um, I don't mean fitness as in reproductive success. I mean the well-being of the products of incest are compromised by the fact that deleterious recessives that would almost never meet each other, meet each other with great regularity. But mm -hmm. what that does is it exposes those deleterious recessives to selection, which then purges them. And so the point is inbreeding is a problem that corrects itself if the species persists through it. So we've got all kinds of species that and went- And effectively, if, if the species survives, can act as a, like a purgative. A cleanser. Sure. Um, so we've got things like sea otters, which were down to a population of like less than 100 individuals that have now bounced back to a population of tens of thousands. Um, so the point is, well, you know, based on what we think about inbreeding, shouldn't that bottleneck have caused them not to be able to bounce back? And the answer is no, because inbreeding is caused so repeatedly through evolutionary history that there's a whole story about it that we don't understand. Um, so the reason I say that your point, is this somebody we know? Who it's asked? Echo. Echo, of mm -hmm. course it's Echo. Um, the reason that I say niches will definitely have an impact is that cer certain niches are gonna cause this just by their very nature, mm -hmm. right? That the nature of dispersal, right, in some species is going to result in this never being an issue or almost never being an issue. And in other ones, you know, something that uh, finds itself, you know, dispersing over a boundary and being a tiny population at first, that is going to happen routinely. Mm -hmm. What you ought to find is that the inbreeding depression, the cost of inbreeding is very low in population or in species in which this is regularly a source of a new, uh, a new population.